ch 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 changes Yeah, that's right. All things good and bad must eventually come to an end. But the year 2021 means the end of a couple cars that we are seriously sad to see go. And a couple that the world could definitely have done without. Whether you like it or not, there's a whole bunch of models that won't make it to 2021. And we're gonna run you through what they are. And if you're new here, I'm Brad Danger. Hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and buckle up because these cars are now discontinued. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, this first one, I seriously never really understood where it sat in the market, but it was pretty cool. And BMW will be dropping one seriously stylish member of its lineup in 2021. That's right, the i8 looks like it came back from the future with its exterior design. And that little gas sipping engine paired with a couple electric motors was a technology way ahead of its time. But you know, if you ask me, it kind of makes sense why the i8 is getting dropped. Its power output came as a disappointment to anyone impressed by its supercar styling. And do you know how much horsepower it put out? Yeah, a measly 369, which, you know, is impressive until you consider the fact that the 2020 model retailed for about $150,000. And this car looks like it should be able to blast straight to the moon, but it's likely that the i8 will be replaced in the lineup by a car with a similar concept. Even if it's not called the i8, let's just hope that the next time around they put in a little bit more power because I truly believe the i8 is something that us enthusiasts wonder what could have been. And although it does have those billionaire doors, it really doesn't have much else going for it, except its looks. Just like the next car on this list was built on its looks. And I was built on my looks. Oh wait, I wasn't? What? Well, just because this next car looks good doesn't mean you should open up your wallet for one. Alfa Romeo has always struggled with reliability, but the 4C was pretty much the polar opposite of the word durable, and that reflected pretty hard in their sales. Despite this sleek looking sports car going for under $50,000 new, they only sold 144 Spiders and Coupes in the entire 2019 year. Yeah, 144, that's like three per state three per state here in the USA. And it only gets worse from there because in 2020, they're gonna be lucky if they break 100 sales. I'd hate to be an alpha sales guy right now. You'd make like no money. But it's pretty hard to get past the fact that, well, these things pretty much break down right after you drive them off the lot. And I guess consumers weren't really in love with the idea of weekly visits to the mechanic. And we're sad to see many of these cars on this list go, but the 4C is just better off dead. Speaking of cars that we here at Ideal will be mourning in 2020, it's tough to say goodbye to the next vehicle, mostly because it's an absolutely iconic name in American manufacturing. The first Chevy Impala hit the streets all the way back in 1958. And since then, the name has been used on and off for cars that define the American muscle car category and modern mid-sized sedans like the 2020 model. But one thing is for sure, everyone's heard of the Impala and it's appeared all over pop culture since its birth. And I think it goes without saying that it has become the most popular and most famous car in the low rider community. But before you start crying over the end of the Impala era, don't worry, Chevy's done this before and I'm sure they're gonna roll out some other hybrid subcompact called the 2030 Impala in a few years. But sure, it may not look like the original muscle car, but the name is way too good to give up. And up next is another well-known name in American car making. And it's almost unbelievable that they're taking this model out of their lineup. This was a car that was once the prize child for Cadillac, and it's now being thrown into the trash in 2021. Not even the recycle bit, just the straight up trash. The CT6 was the first Cadillac to receive General Motors Super Cruise semi-autonomous drive system and now these robotic rides are being declared obsolete. It seems like Cadillac may be singing the SUV blues since they must have put a lot of effort into rolling out this high-tech super sedan and then only five years later they took it out of their lineup. It's a shame that the CT6 didn't survive because it is one seriously rad caddy, particularly the one that came in V trim called the CT6V. Baby, that thing had performance to back up those badass looks. It was classy and luxurious, and it has that Cadillac design language that just screams money in the bank. And pop that hood and a 4.2 liter, 32 valve, supercharged dual overhead cam black wing V8 puts out 500 horsepower. And show me an SUV that can compete with that. Dragon.
The next vehicle on this list has nearly as much horsepower as the CT6V and is another power hungry piece of American machinery that will be missed in 2021. It kind of pains me and I, I wish this wasn't true, but in 2020, it's going to go down in history as the final year of the manual transmission Mustang Shelby. And that is not ideal, but what is ideal is our ideal hats, our ideal shirts. Go snag one while they last. In 2021, Ford plans to stop producing models of the Mustang Shelby GT350 and its track ready variant, the GT350R. And that's so that they can focus on the 760 horsepower supercharged GT500, which unfortunately is not available with a manual transmission. Sure. It's got a pretty cool dual clutch auto though, but it's just not the same. The GT350 with that flat plane crank V8 was fun while it lasted though. And what is essentially a milder version of the 500 was still able to crank out 526 horsepower and it could rev to the moon. Yeah, that and the Ferrari V8 are like the two best V8s ever. And with the GT350, you could hit 60 in just 3.5 seconds. And no, it's not the terrifying beast that its big brother the GT500 is, but hey, it came with a manual transmission, which if you want to save the manuals, it's time we all do our part in saving them. And I just hope the GT350 makes a comeback someday. And the next car wouldn't hold a candle to the power of the GT350, but with a few performance mods, maybe it could. Now, here's not a car, but a name that should have been discontinued years ago. Seriously, what the hell is a Yaris? It just sounds kind of like a, a dirty word and it doesn't make me or you or really anybody want to drive one. But despite the awful name and the pretty bad rap that the Yaris has gotten, the car wasn't really all that bad. It's a Toyota, so you know it's gonna be reliable, and it handles a lot better than some sports cars. And its engine actually has fantastic tuning potential. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And all those factors make the Yaris a potential sleeper that will leave Ferraris flabbergasted when you pass them on the left. Eh, well. That might be a stretch. People don't seem too excited about the Yaris anymore though. And only 22,000 units were sold last year. More and more people seem to be opting for the Corolla, which has pretty much been flying off the lot in 2020. And another company that has a huge lineup of larger vehicles these days is Ford. As a result, the Ford Fusion is on the chopping block. Ford Motor Company has decided to do away with its midsize sedans, and not only under the Ford marquee, but Lincoln as well. In addition to discontinuing the Ford Fusion, which has been around since 2006, can you believe it or not? They will also stop production on the Lincoln MKZ. This means Lincoln will be a SUV only brand in 2021. And the only passenger cars Ford will still be producing is the Mustang and the GT. And you know how I feel about the Mustang. However, there's word that the Fusion may return like the Phoenix from the ashes, but this time as a Subaru Outback-esque crossover wagon thingy-majiggy. And they're planning on calling it the Fusion Active, probably to appeal to all those health-crazed Gen Zers or something. But whether or not it'll have a hybrid version is yet to be seen. But despite the trend towards electric cars, the Fusion sedan couldn't sell itself very well to survive. So I guess I'll see you when you're a wagon. And the next vehicle, well, it's another sedan that's seeing the last of its days. And it's a damn shame considering how much coolness and comfort it brought to the table. I'm not gonna cry on camera or anything. No, I seriously am not gonna cry on camera, but I'm seriously sad to see the Lexus GS go. It was offered as the somewhat in the middle option between the rear drive LS and the front drive ES. The GS series was just cool. It was calm and it was collected and it was an easy car to overlook. And with so many people choosing an alternative Lexus sedan, the GS is now going out of production, which is, a shame, but the GS isn't dropping off the earth completely. The last 200 GS350 models are set to be released as GS350 F Sport Black Line Special Editions. And this last ditch effort for the 350 will sell at just over $55,000 new. And if that's out of your budget, because it's definitely out of mine, just wait around, because in the next few years, the GS is going to be an ideal option on the secondhand market. And if you want to learn how to buy it like a pro, well, start studying now using the ideal car strategies, because the GS is going to be all that silent luxury you expect from Lexus at a super affordable price. And next up is a roadster from the luxury sector that's also set to meet its end in 2021. What's wrong with people nowadays? Do they not like roadsters anymore? <sighs> 
I see how it is. The Tesla Roadster is set to come out with its fancy jet engine and suddenly there's no more room for other Roadsters on the market? Well, I, for one, am slightly upset that this is the end of the Mercedes SLC class. The 2020 SLC started at under $50,000 and came with a solid 241 horsepower in the base trim. Plus it's got all that sleek styling and you could ask for a retractable hardtop. I mean, what's not to like? Well, apparently the market would completely disagree with me because based on sales of the SLC, they have been tanking ever since it was called the SLK back in the early 2000s. But did they really think that changing just one letter would boost popularity? <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, the SLC always seemed to be overshadowed by its bigger brother, the SL. And the SL is objectively sleeker and more powerful. So I guess the SLC was just too expensive for the blue collar market, but not cool enough for the financial elite. But if you like that SLC SLK style, you can find awesome used examples for under 20 grand. So who says you gotta spend a fortune for a drop top Merc, right? Just make sure you have another bucket or two of cash for repairs. And the next car, is not all that luxurious, but it's cute and it's compact. So I'm gonna try not to put it down. Yeah, that's right. The tiny little Honda Fit will be getting the chop come 2021. And if you follow this channel, you probably heard us bring up the Fit a lot. And that's because it's kind of an awesome car for what it is. It's inexpensive, it's pretty safe, and it's fairly fun to drive. And you fit into every parking space on this planet. Okay, that joke's getting a little old. Let's uh, come up with some new stuff, you guys. Anyway, since the Fit came out in 2006, it's been an all-star in the subcompact hatchback class. So it's a bit of a surprise that Honda's getting rid of it. However, they do plan to do some more heavy promotion for the HRV, which is a subcompact crossover SUV that they're hoping people will buy as their entry-level ride. Honda also seems to be making the transition away from passenger cars as a whole. And believe it or not, they're also discontinuing the Civic Coupe in 2021. And so there are 10 different vehicles that won't see the light of day in 2021. Which one brings a tear to your eye that you're not gonna see next year? Or did we miss one? Let us know down below. And if you enjoyed this Ideal content, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, my name's Brad Danger. This is Ideal. Please subscribe, turn on that notification bell because we're coming at you with the heat pretty much every single day. And remember to check your oil every once in a while. And keep living the Ideal Lifestyle.